Hey guys, what's up? Gary Simon here, of course, Cetro, and this is a look at the very bare bones, ugly app interface that uh, I'm going to use to demonstrate how to use the Iona Cordova screenshot plugin. So we have two buttons up here. One will call upon a save method with the screenshot plugin, which saves the actual uh, screenshot to the phone. The other one does the same thing, except it's the URI method in which it doesn't save to the phone, but it still gives you the screenshot data. So if you don't need to save it, then whatever. So just to demonstrate that it works, you need to click on the pick one. It'll show for one second, the actual screenshot. Uh, the same exact thing happens just to show you that the URI works as well, except when I click this, it does not save it to the phone. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Oh, but real quick, before we begin, make sure you check out my site, CourseCetro.com, where you're going to find a bunch of courses on modern design and development. A lot are free, and the others you can access for the cost of buying me like a six-pack each month. That's it. Now, also, it probably wouldn't hurt to subscribe here on YouTube, and be sure to make sure the notifications are turned on. All right, let's get back to it. All right, so I am here in my console, and this is a console emulator for Windows called CMDER Commander. You can see right there this name. You can Google it. It's free. You can have custom themes, which is what I'm using. I only add that because so many people ask me, what am I using? Anyhow, so whether it's Angular, Vue, Ionic, et cetera, I'm always a big fan of starting projects with a command line interface CLI if one exists. So, you know, we want to be sure that your Ionic command line interface is up to date, or if you don't have one, to make sure to install it. So to do that, we're going to do npm install hyphen g for global. Just do this once at latest. All right. So we'll let this install real quick, and I will pause until it is finished. Uh, well, I won't have to because it's that quick. All right. So now we're going to use the Ionic CLI to start the project. So Ionic, wait, first I'm going to hop into my code folder. Ionic start. I'm going to call this screenshot and we're going to use a blank template. So I'll pause and come back. And once that is done, we're going to CD into the project folder name screenshot. And then we're going to have to install the Cordova plugin and also the Ionic native screenshot plugin. So it's two different commands here. Um, just for reference, there is a written tutorial that I'm kind of just following along as I type this out. Um, you can too if you wish. And I'm just going to paste in the first command right here, which is Ionic Cordova plugin add com.darktalker.cordova.screenshot. So you may be wondering, uh, by the way, hit yes for this. You know, where did I find out how to do this or like what command to run? Well, very simply, in the official Ionic documentation right here, we can see that the screenshot installation requires running these two commands right here. So uh, we're going to take this one actually next after the other one finishes, which it is, and just right click to paste in and then install that. And after that is done installed, we'll head on to our code editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code, which is free from Microsoft. Most people use it these days for coding. And uh, let's open that up now. All right, here we are. Let's go to Source App and the App Module TS. So let's close that. Always nagging me about upgrading. Um, and so now, very simply, uh, this is also based on that documentation page that I just showed you. We import screenshot here at the top and then we add, we'll copy screenshot right there, the name as a provider in the providers array and then we save. All right, so uh, we're gonna focus on getting started with the actual component code. So you could do the, you know, the template first if you want. We're gonna do this first. Okay, so we're gonna go back here real quick and just grab the same line. We're gonna import it at the top of our home TS. And this is pretty much standard procedure for working with pretty much uh, any of the other Ionic native plugins. You know, you, you add it to your app module, add it to your home TS, and then the next step is to create an instance of it through dependency injection in the constructor. So how do you do that? This is also mentioned in the documentation, private. We'll name it screenshot. This is what we'll use. This creates an instance of it. And then we add it, we reference it to screenshot right here. Very simple. Okay, so 
Now, just above the constructor right here in this area, we're going to define two properties. Uh, so first, is the one is going to be called screen, and this is going to hold the image, which will either be a file path or a base64 encoded string. So screen, type any, and then next, we'll call this state. It's going to be a Boolean, and we're going to make it false by default. And this is going to help us determine when a screenshot is being displayed. And you'll see why I added this. This is not actually necessary um, to use the screenshot plugin. It's just for our little example app. All right. Um, next, we're going to create uh, our functions. So I created a real uh, generic function right here called reset. And this is going to use a set timeout function to uh, change the state which is the state property up there to true after one second. That way it'll hide or toggle that image. So uh, what we're going to do is var self equals this and then set timeout function inside of here. We'll do self dot state equals false. And I found out if you use this dot state like you regularly would, it won't work and it won't change it because we're in set timeout. So var self equals this is that fix. And then next we're going to put in the duration which I'm just going to put a, a thousand uh, milliseconds or one second right here. Okay. So after that, we'll get to, I'm going to hit control B by the way, to get rid of that uh, sidebar. We're going to do the uh, very first method that we're going to call upon, which will use the save method. All right. So if we refer back to the documentation real quickly, um, let me get this up. We'll see if we come down here, we have instance members. So we have save which takes in a format, quality, and file name. And the file name could be J, or the, the, the format rather, could be JPG or PNG, although only on uh, iOS JPG works. Um, and then also URI, all right? So this takes a screenshot, returns the image as in URI. So it's basically, it returns the images as, as a string, but it doesn't save it to the phone. So our first method will use this save method, and then the second will be the URI. So let's do the um, save method first. So the name of that method that we'll call upon will be screenshot. Inside of here, we're going to reference our instance, which is screenshot.save. So we're going to use type JPEG. We'll just say 80 for the quality and then name it whatever you want. I'll just keep consistent with the documentation. Then take the response and we'll say this dot screen, which is the property we created above, and we set it to response dot file path. So the response is an object. If you just put it to response like some might, uh, it's not going to work. Um, if you're curious about what all properties that are part of that response, you can just always do console dot log and the response, and you'll see it in the inspector. Uh, but going back, this is screen equals the response dot file path. And we'll add this dot screen or this screen through interpolation in the template uh, in the image source attribute. All right, so then we set this state to true. And then we'll call upon a reset met method up there. And that will fire after one second and set this back to false right here. All right, oops, there we go. Awesome. Next, our second and final or third and final method. I'm just going to copy this, make life a little bit easier. This is going to be screenshot URI, all capital. This method goes from save to URI, all capital as well. And it's just one parameter. This time it's the middle parameter, which is the quality, because we're not saving it. We don't need the type or location. So. Um, then in the response, we set this as screen to response.uri. And then these two remain the same. Okay. That's all. That's all our little app is was ever going to be, unless you expand upon it, which I don't know why you would. So let's hop into the home HTML file. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and we're going to gut everything um, up here. We're not going to have a header and also inside of here. Okay, so to get started, um, right here, we're going to add uh, class binding. So this is Angular specific. So we put in class dot 
and then the name of the class that we want to toggle or we want to add. And we'll call this new BG. And we're going to bind it to a state property. So if state is true, it will have new BG class added to the ion content element. And this is all this is going to do is just change the background color. And we'll do the CSS in a little bit. Um, and the reason I'm changing the background color is because when you take a screenshot of the current UI and then show that screenshot, you can't really tell where it begins because it's like a screenshot within a screenshot. Uh, oh my. All right. So next we're going to have a button. Ion button. We're going to say outline. That's just to style it. So it's going to be an outline style. And then on a click event, which again is Angular specific, we'll call our screen shot method. All right, and then screenshot will be pick. Now shift alt and down to copy that line. And this time we're gonna change this here to URI. Change this to URI as well. All right, just one more line of our image, which is serves as just the preview to say, hey, we got the screenshot, don't have to do this. Um, so screenshot is screen through interpolation for the source. And then this will only show if, which is ngif, which is angular, state is true. There we go. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to do, uh, we're going to go to our home SAS file. And real quickly, I'm not going to sit here and just type all this out. It's only four rule sets, so don't worry. All right. So we have our ion content. We're changing the background color to just some, I don't know, just some random app color. Text line center, yep, very easy. Here's a new D BG class that will change it to a lighter version of the background so that the um, screenshot sticks out. Then our button, I'm just styling the buttons a little bit differently. And then our image, I'm just kind of take them within so it's not 100%, um, giving it a border and margin. Yeah, that is it. So now, how do we test it out? Well, because we're using an Ionic native plugin, we can't use ng-serve to serve up the, uh, the, the the actual app in the lab or whatever. So to test out the screenshot, you could have used the Ionic, Ionic View app, but I'm gonna use just uh, a couple of commands in a console and then connect my phone to test it out through USB. So going back here, let me hit clear here. We're going to run Ionic, Cordova, platform, add, and then Android, because I am using Android, you can use, uh, you can add whatever, you know, if you're using iOS or whatever to go ahead and do that. This takes quite a while. So I'm not gonna bore you with my ramblings. I will pause. Then uh, once you have your phone connected, and by, by the way, make sure that you have developer mode turned on on your Android and also USB um, debugging is enabled in the settings. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google it. Um, then you can run Ionic, Cordova, run Android. And then when it runs this, it's gonna package up the project and then it's going to install it on your phone and then it will automatically load and launch the app on your phone. And then you can try it out. So I'm not gonna do that simply because I already showed you the app on my phone at the very beginning of this tutorial using the same method. So that is it. So hopefully you learned a lot. Make sure to check out coursecetra.com. We have a bunch of Ionic and Angular related courses, hopefully in the future that will extend to other topics. And I will see you later. All right. Goodbye.